think of my grandfather, the word that I think of is strong. Well, the story starts with um, a lunch that my sister Donna and I had with my dad. We had just gotten back from a family vacation and it was January of 06. And he asked to meet us, we met for lunch and that's when he told us that he needed a kidney. And uh, I mentioned him to make sure that he um, uh, relayed the message to his family that he needed a kidney transplant. The day after, he showed up with a number of donors, potential life donors that I've never seen in my career. They were all lining up. And uh, the first in line was Lori, one of his daughters, who happened to be a perfect match. And, you know, my dad said, it's not even an option. I'm going to explore my options. And there weren't really that many options. You know, the Italians have a lot of strange ways. And one of them is that you don't take from your children, you give for your children. And, uh, and I, I find it very hard to do this. If anything should happen to my daughter, I wouldn't be able to live with that. And my wife was very encouraging. So I called the doctor and said, let's go with it. Okay, I've never been sorry, never. My daughter never had a problem, and neither did I. It was a matter of just going in, getting a new kidney, and go home and go just live your life like you've been doing for the last uh, 60 or 70 years. I'm very proud of this transplant program and uh, what we have accomplished for uh, patients like Mr. Nicoletti. We at Jefferson uh, have uh, uh, one of the best uh, patient and graft survival in the country and we have the shortest waiting time for patients that uh, are waiting for a cadaver kidney transplant. And I think uh, much more can be done with the support of everyone. When I think about my grandfather, the one word I think of is devoted. Bob is an amazing gentleman. He loved B more than anything in the whole world. He just loved to be with her. B was a very gentle woman. She had her quiet way of bringing you into her life and she was always aware of what your likes were, what your family were doing, how she could become more involved in our life. She was immediately liked by everyone. She was a wonderful woman. She uh, was a, 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 an incredible wife, and an incredible mother and grandmother. When I think of my grandfather, I think of the word selfless. From the moment I married his son, he took me in like his daughter. He's just been like a wonderful, caring, loving person who's always been supportive. And he loves my kids like they're his own. When I think of my grandpa, I think of the word lovable. Does he like the grandkids? He loves them. He loves spending time with them. It's not unusual for him to have dinner with one, two, three, four at a time. Uh, every week he's having dinner with one of them. The one word I think of when I think of my grandfather is the word honorable. Well, my father has an incredible work ethic. He's 81 years old, still works six days a week. Obviously, that sort of uh, uh, ethic rubs off on anybody who's around him. He's a firm believer that a handshake agreement is much more important and more binding than anything ever written. He believes your word is your honor, and he has worked very hard our whole lives to convey the importance of that. And, and, and with it, there's no compromise. I always admired what Bob was doing as an entrepreneur. Um, and he had a unique leadership quality that I thought was worth emulating, frankly. Uh, he was very gentle, uh, but very direct. I'll tell you what else I admired about him was the fact that he was in the military and very low-keyed about the fact that he was on the boxing team in Europe, which I thought was pretty unique. The word that I think of when I think of my grandfather is wise. 
he knows what he wants, he knows how to spot the issues, and he's a global thinker. He doesn't really get involved with the minuscule things that you or I might get involved with that might prevent something from happening. That's probably the, one of the biggest reasons why he's so successful. The other thing is he's innovative. We're commercial real estate developers. What we do is so unique though. We go into distressed communities and find a large building in the center of the neighborhood and with our own private capital, no government subsidies, we invest in turning that building around. So these projects aren't about just office buildings. Um, an old building that people had given up on for years comes back to life. And then dozens of people go to work in that building every day trying to help that community. And that's because of my dad's leadership. When I think of my grandpa, I think of the word giving. The more you give back, the more that comes back to you. So it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling and, and, and desire and drive. Greater Philadelphia Health Action is a nonprofit corporation that we provide ambulatory health care to 80,000 people in Philadelphia. I was warned to be careful of Bob because he was tough and he, and, and I had to really be careful. But when I met him and we started talking and started and engaged, uh, it was like someone I've known for years. We developed a long-term relationship, friendship as well as business relationship. Catch Incorporate is a community mental health mental retardation center uh, for most of the South Philadelphia and Center City area. Any success that we have experienced over these past 25 years, uh, PSDC, Bob's company, has been an integral part of that success. Not only have we had an excellent business relationship, but over those 25 years, uh, we have become friends. When I think of my grandpa, I think of the perfect combination of strength and love. Well, I would really like to uh, thank and congratulate uh, Bob Nicoletti. This is an individual that has a family that really cares. They have endowed two professorships, not one, but two. That is very, very unique, and to the best of my knowledge base, uh, it's never been done before. Bob is going to receive the award this evening, and uh, we all uh, heartily congratulate uh, Bob for his terrific generosity to uh, Jefferson, but also uh, we should be saying congratulations to his family. The Jefferson community is often described as a family, and if there's one thing that Bob Nicoletti values, it's family. With the endowed professorships they have funded, the Nicolettis have created a legacy that enables Jefferson to excel in research discoveries in both nephrology and transplant surgery. And Bob and his family are not just committed to research and clinical care. They have decided to use funds from this year's gala to support a scholarship for students at Jefferson Medical College. It is a pleasure to recognize Bob as both the patriarch of such a generous family and a member of the Jefferson family. The one word I would use to describe my grandpa is inspirational. The biggest things he always says is to be grateful. To be grateful for all we have, uh, for being able to work as hard as we do, um, for Jefferson being a part of our family and our life. Jefferson took a, a, what could have been a very traumatic and heart-wrenching experience and turned it into a heartwarming, loving, um, really bonding experience for the whole family with Jefferson. I think we're just always gonna be a part of the Jefferson family and they'll always be a part of our family because of our experience there. It's just the way it goes. Well, the Jefferson experience is marvelous. Unbelievable. They're very, very attentive, caring, loving people. I have a great deal of respect for the hospital and a great deal of uh, 
admiration. And I hope to be in their lives as long as my life is around. When I think of Grandpa, I think of someone who smells great. 